Hello, going live. I'm going live now. And we're live. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome Hello. to Hello. Kami, episode 135, uh, uh, which is also on the on the first week of our don't know which third, third time doing lockdown. Or fourth yes. time. Yeah, it's, it's MCO 3.0, right? That's okay. that's what they say. It's 3.0. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not, I don't even know what's the meaning anymore because I understand that business needs the income and all that, but everything seems open, so I don't know what's the part. Yeah. Hey, remember to, you remember to say your name. <laughs> yes, my name is Yumei. Yeah, the Finnish are. I'm Tristan. Oh. And of course, we're Chile. I actually forget to say his name. Yeah, I'm Chile. <laughs> so, yes, uh, I have the Dev Coming windows open. So let me share the windows. Firefox. Woohoo. I have no idea what's the topic of the day. And my browser died. Uh, oh, my browser actually died. Goodness gracious. Uh, I'll stop sharing. Post quick. Let me start again. Let's come to words and just switch. How do you what what do you think about uh, let's let's do some bike sharing? Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. If you're on Firefox, uh, Firefox actually has a new UI. Yes. Do they? Uh, yeah. Which version is this? Uh, let, let me, me open it up. up. Um, so, oh, they have um. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I find it horrible. Everything is so huge that the tab looks so big. Yeah, I have eighty nine. Does it look big? I don't know. It's big for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's uh, yeah. your mileage may be regular. <laughs> yes. But can you see this? Actually, uh, what you see here is Firefox 89 full screen. Yeah. It's a bit weird. Okay, it's not so bad on a big screen. It, it doesn't look that bad for me as well. But maybe that's because I have a big screen. I'm not sure. It's not that much of an change actually I, the only change i've seen is that when you click on that hamburger menu you have this spectrum of color yeah, with the yeah, new yeah. firefox uh what they call this the new firefox colors i think that's the only yeah. thing that i noticed everything else is, still seems to be the same yeah yeah i think it's just okay. better of getting used to it mm. <laughs> so let's talk about events we have nothing let's move on uh no, no events <laughs> Mm. Uh, <laughs> we think we are we are we commonly remember things of some uh, uh, let me take a So let's start bus corner. Uh bus corner have been curated, so it's, uh, we won't have the full thing for the community. So let's start one by one. This is a cool story actually. Actually, so read it. Uh it, so this lady is ninety five years old, and nobody remembers her until uh, uh, until somebody blogged about the IBM Chinese typewriter. Uh, so, blah, 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 God damn it, not now. I didn't try now. So, as it turns out, IBM do have, uh, IBM do have a Chinese typewriter here. And it's actually done by one of the Chinese engineers. Actually, he's a technician, but he got the liberty to do this. What, 1947? So Yes, 1947. And this can produce 5,400 characters. Wow. And if you notice the typewriter, there's not a lot of buttons. Basically, uh, it's like, is it like uh, memorizing the Unicode? Uh, uh, not really, not really. I don't believe okay. really it's numbers. It's like this is probably uh, this is probably the inspiration for Emacs when you have to code <laughs> uh, letters. This is it. So that, then there is, yeah, I think it's encoding. You need to remember the encoding. Yeah. So you have to chord keys. You have to like, you know, you're like, on Tmux, for example, control B, A, and then you have something like that. <laughs> yeah, wow. so you, you're basically somebody who can remember everything. Yeah. Uh, oh, they don't have link to the video. I wonder if I can find it. And when they mentioned so, like 5,400 characters, right, it's actually not the... Uh, it's not the total amount of Chinese character, but that is uh, 
but that is the number of character you need to uh, know in order to be considered Chinese literal, li literal, Correct. As in Correct. high school level kind of uh, Chinese literacy. Correct. So there's more. There's more Chinese characters than 5-4. 5-4 uh, is like the minimum you have to know. So uh, mm. this, is, this is a cool story in a way that this lady is not trained as a technician or in the city. She is there because uh, it's one of those women a worker at that time, small hands and city can do delicate work. And the engineer found her, she remember she able to memorize the key and do produce. It's, uh, do know it's how to actually, use the device. It's actually yes. very impressive that you can remember them because like even like uh, yes. I know how to write and type Chinese, but often we forget we forget the the correct word. So we often use the like the the, the neighbor that I mean something that look alike now, but actually wrong wrong word now. So but uh, sometimes some of the word they get mainstream or like uh, they get too yes. simplified then uh, everybody just fall get used to the mistake. So it's actually very correct. impressive that she can remember all the correct words, correct words. Correct. So well, not uh, just the characters but also the combination to generate the character. Yeah. Correct. So as you know, uh since you never nobody heard of this kind of uh typewriter, uh so it didn't work lah, as a did it, business, did, it, uh, did it go to market or no it didn't went to market they did try to so she her and her bosses one of the engineer that created this do try to sell it in to china then what happened after that is uh the mark uh there's the revolution yeah so that's the, that's the uh, and, uh, civil war correct then everything just don't work lah, and people forget about this calculate this typewriter yeah then, and uh, here's the interesting then also uh -huh. mainly China switched to the simplified characters. Yes, uh, then Taiwan still there, it get a bit weird. But here's the interesting thing. Uh, in the early 90s, late 80s, uh, China do consider, uh, do consider changing to just English. Uh, here's why. As it turns out, uh, computers are designed for English uh, because it's built by the Westerners and all that. Then one of the Chinese Academy of Science, there is a computer engineer, which I don't remember the name, god damn it. I will find find it. He actually invented a way to encode Chinese, encode Chinese in computer form. Uh, this is pre-unicode days. So suddenly a uh, computer can actually type in Chinese. But uh, all the way that we actually type Chinese right now, your IMUs and all that, is actually based on based on that design. So it's China, uh, China is very close to uh, and, drop. And Chinese input, like uh, you know, like uh, sometimes when you do uh, when you when you type on the phone, you get auto complete, yes. right? So uh, Correct. the Chinese input has been doing that since the, in the nineties, uh, Correct. Swimming? Uh, so were you talking about like code pages? The uh, like before that's before Unicode, where it's the same character. It's just you. The lookup yeah, table is different. Okay. Correct, correct. That's the Windows also, code pages from way back before. Uh, it's not just that, but uh, that leads There were other standards as well. Like, uh, correct, correct. I used to host the Chinese character website. Uh, back then, yeah. it was the most commonly you want, used one is not UTF-8, but uh, Big 5. So UTF-8 is more mainstream these days, but back then, uh, most of the Chinese system were Big 5. Mm -hmm. I try to I try to find it. Uh, this actually this actually, ah, uh, it's CJK. What is CJK? Uh, it's only, Chinese, Japanese, uh, Korean. Uh, it's very old, but I don't remember. I will find the article because I actually heard of it from I actually heard of it from NPR, so it's very interesting. Uh, I will share that later. But either way, uh, China is that close to dropping. Chinese as an official language uh, because it's hard to encode Chinese language in the computer. At this 1947 yeah. there. At one time they felt they so uh, it was so dire that uh, they actually thought because they were left because they can't computerize their system. At one yeah. time they they actually has a working I think a working group to romanize Chinese. Correct. Similar so, to what um, being what 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 done to Vietnamese lah, I think. Correct. So, so uh, this is a cool story. I suggest that we did. 
So you may need to subscribe. Maybe later. Uh, yeah, That's I, I remember the episode, but uh, I don't know which which one that is. Correct. And the end have a premium feature. I may go premium. Yeah. But what they do yes. promise is all the content is still free. Nothing changed. But I do not know what does it mean. I, I think also it offer uh, API like uh, to integrate with your ID, something like that. Yeah. So yeah, uh, something to look forward to because unfortunately this is resources, resources, state more resources. In this case, the dev resources are the articles and all that, but those need money to run. So unfortunately, with no foundation willing to provide it, it is what it is. Well. The traditional way to run this kind of thing is having a foundation, but if no foundation want to do that, or it's a lot of work, then that's an issue. Well. So the next one is uh, being get 1.0 is up. So this is actually the equivalent of the app, the chocolate. Uh, this is the official Windows one, one of the official Windows one. This is the equivalent of app, uh, um, or, yeah, and whatever they Apple use. I don't remember the name. So yeah, it's 1.0 now. Uh, and it's actually supported by the Windows developer communities. So if you, on Windows, start doing, uh, start using it. And uh, John actually it, put this like, uh, yes, uh, I think uh, China actually has a pretty a uh, big and active uh, Esperanto community. But uh, back yeah. then, the one of the major, from what I understand, is uh, one of the major move they're going to do if they fail to digitize the Chinese character is they're going to Romanize Chinese. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, ro it's one of those Roman characters, so it will be European So you become, yeah, A to Z. <laughs> yes. No more Chinese writing. Correct. Something like uh, Vietnamese. Lah. Yeah. If I want I will, to uh, know what? I will try to find the links once I remember where it is. No, not 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 really like pinyin. Pinyin is like the one to to. That is much later. There is yeah. come something come much for, later actually. for learning la, But uh, the they literally can the pinyin nice everything like instead of a, uh, it they, instead of seeing the Chinese character, we, pinyin is actually key in the Romanized uh, yeah, pronunciation, but. You get the Chinese character, but the Romanization means that they literally just use the Roman characters. Correct, correct. So yes, uh, so it's a cool story. So next one, uh, Spanner get uh, get more granular pricing. So if you do have to use it, so something like this actually comes from heaven. So I don't use it, so I just put here just because. Shall we, shall we move on? Yeah. That also was sold to process for yeah. 1.8 billion dollars. I do not know who is processed, but uh, this is actually funded by Tencent. Oh, it's actually oh okay. It's a shareholder of Tencent. Interesting. <coughs> uh, interesting because uh, the the company is not really selective about what they what they're buying. Uh, I hope uh, nothing changed. I hope nothing changed. It's a bit surprising because I thought uh, Microsoft Correct. is the one they're gonna acquire them. <laughs> Correct, because uh, because uh, they do have provide resource, and Microsoft has been trying to uh, provide resource to developers. Or oh, or oh. just grow up in Malaysia. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> we are yeah. we are almost uh, everybody is trilingual at least. <laughs> This is why I can go for Portuguese. I actually I'll spent a bit of time. Uh, uh -huh. I think I lost more of it, but I did spend like a year or two learning as per. But if, if it was very simple because you just need to learn one. If you have mm -hmm. the negative one, you just do a mau like, uh, uh, like hot is varma, so cold is mau varma. I mean, not not hot. So this is a cool bug. So as it turns out, uh, because the data structure changed as a result, the colors for the test image is wrong. And the reason is because uh, it's because malloc actually uh, we allocate. Yeah. We al I think we, uh, we can order go to the, the DLBI yeah, actually. It's, it's something that is a question that we receive uh, from time to time in yeah. uh, language forums and, and oh. chat room is that uh, scroll up summary. Uh, final. Yeah, the bug, the bug, the bug. Okay. 
Yeah. Somebody uses hash table to store object that should be ordered. So right. uh, it's a very common uh, misconception that uh, yes. that we assume that the hash table or equivalent uh, data structure like, uh, like Python's dictionary, Golang's yep. map, right. or hash in uh, Perl, something like that, to be yep. ordered. Or sometimes, sometimes it behave to be ordered because it's uh, and and some of them like a uh, language like uh, Go, they purposely sh uh, shuffle it so that you don't rely on this uh, undefined behavior. Mm -hmm. So uh, something to understand about data structure and all that now is yeah, it's simply over and over. Well, it, it really yeah. depends on the programming language that you're using, especially right, like. Right. I guess this one is a C, right? This is a C, and you, you, it doesn't make any guarantees about the insertion order. I would, oh, sorry, on the hash table, whether it will stay in insertion order or whether it will be sorted or something. Yeah, so it, there's no guarantee. Although, for example, in Ruby, it is guaranteed in, sorry, what? Arrays are guaranteed in insertion order, but I'm not sure about hash tables. So it depends really on your programming language. In some cases, for example, in Java, there are data structures that guarantee a hash yep. table's insertion order. So like, uh, like in there. Python, there's an order dig, but dig itself yeah. is not guaranteed. So, yeah. so uh, people, I, I like even sometimes uh, uh, I've seen senior they made the mistake that they that they thought that it's ordered. Mm -hmm. So define so behavior. Yeah. So the moral here is understand your data structure. Don't make assumptions. So I th and I think that's yeah, make sure that your assumptions are correct. I think you need to correct. assume, for example, that the documentation of your programming language is correct. So there are there are some assumptions, but make like just test out the thing, like whether your assumptions yeah. are correct. Correct. So uh, always test, always measure. And when something is wrong, don't make assumption. Uh, test it and all that. So yeah. Uh, it's something that I've been telling my fellow that in my workplace and all that. Uh, have you tested? Okay, so it's state something. Have you tested it? Uh, have you measured it when you can? So don't make assumption. That's my thing now. Yeah, oh, am I, I too measure. loud? Uh, I, don't I, know. I don't know. I am, I am quite far from the mic, you know, and I don't speak so loud. I'm not sure. Let me see if I can... On fix screen, this so i think it's that the stream yard itself the, it normalizes us but you're yeah. not reaching the threshold yet how about this is this better yeah i i basically have my my volume less less noisy mm. so all right uh, okay that's, cool that's all for uh, bus corner so i'm going to stop now oh, uh, about okay. language what? make a lot about language what? Okay, so that's... about the thing about language, right? Do not assume that. Do not assume that the culture is the same across people, which is why, uh, even in Malaysia, we talk to different races, different races. Uh, you will make a lot of assumption, especially some would actually make more assumption about you than others. So you will answer the assumption a lot of it because of language. So. Uh, which is something to be careful about. Uh, again, don't make assumption about language and culture either. Not everyone speak English, not everyone have first name, not everyone have middle name the same way. Our middle no, name is not the same. No, here we use uh, family. I mean, some European system actually has family name and given name. Correct. So first and last uh, is, is very, I don't know, very American to me. Correct. So, Yes, precisely. So, something to think about as well. So, which is why language, uh, learning language is very interesting for this reason. For example, I still don't get French. I, I learned it on Duolingo for a while. I can a bit, but uh, then Japanese is totally different altogether. The order is different. It's like Japanese things are over there. Japanese is harder than Chinese. Yes, then there will be a lot of people that make assumption that they share the same character. They say share the same character must be easy for us. It's also not true. It's right? actually because it's actually uh, Japanese is uh, you still have to do the the learning of learning Chinese character. 
then All you right. have the weird grammatical rules that is yes. much more complicated than Chinese. Yes. It's like Kokowa Dokodeska. This, well, way harder way. because uh, they have uh, inflection as well. Correct. And not right, to mention it's that... Not, not just that. There's also Kago. Depending on who you're talking to, you change yeah. the way uh, you talk. Formal and informal. Yeah. Yes. Well, not just that. There's actually multiple levels of formality. Kago. Not just informal and informal. Uh, yeah. Why you it respect like the respect? Yeah. This lady is who, right? So that's the, that's the weird thing about languages. Uh, Chinese it's used cool. to have that, but uh, the modern one, we just throw everything yeah, away. Yeah, correct. Because <laughs> culture change. Culture change. Used to be also like really conservative. But... I recommend you this book. I recommend this book. Let me find it. It's called... It's, it's uh, much harder because uh, the, the, the word shift and everything. Which there's no much of uh, grammatical rules for Chinese la. basically you just have to remember it and can. then and then you can just do a dictionary like just bring it up and and put them together most likely you uh, people can understand it but Japanese you still have to understand when when it involves grammatical rules you have to understand the language okay I recommend you this book uh, which is relevant for us because we are a primary technical person it's called because internet uh, so this this book is interesting because uh, it, it goes to our point just now. Language changes, language changes, and the cover that language and culture is something that's alive. So things that, uh, for example, our English is probably not understandable for someone in the seventeen hundreds in Europe, in England. So anybody from fifteen hundred. Uh, we probably don't understand what they're talking about. We possibly don't understand Shakespeare. If you read a Shakespeare folder, no one now will understand what he's saying. It's the same for China. Uh, we probably do not understand, we do not actually understand what our ancestors say in the Ming Dynasty, probably. So, something yeah, I, can, I can say is, uh, is, yeah, the challenge is the tonal. So yeah. I actually try even uh, teaching it to some, some still very like, high. Wow. Is that, uh, but basic, but for for those that are not familiar, it's actually uh, I mean literally tone deaf la. I mean they cannot they cannot differentiate the different tone. Yeah, correct. Yeah, in a way so either way, I recommend this book. Uh, for this reason, also uh, this book is interesting because they also tell you tell you why. Emoji is not a language. Emoji is nothing like hieroglyphs. It just looks like one. But I would like to say that uh, it's not very. It's I mean, if I want to get, if I kind of learn a language from the internet, uh, Japanese is easier than Chinese. Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, can, in terms of uh, the language complexity, Chinese is is much lower because yeah. it's just memorizing the combination. We don't even we don't even uh, change the structure at all. Mm -hmm. But oh, yeah, uh, the problem book. is that is uh, mm -hmm. if you kind of learn from the internet or from a book, then it's it's actually more challenging. Let me recommend you another another. But I think get I think get to get really to get good at uh, Japanese, uh, it's 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 harder like. I mean, when it involves uh, kanji like. Yeah, correct. So, uh, you want to another place I suggest you want to know about languages and and also this uh, this is a podcast uh, lexicon ready this guy is a, this guy is a linguist and they will actually talk about subject verb and so this is where the language is different for example Japanese and all that it's interesting I recommend this as well. I think uh, it, we, oh, I lost it. Can we open the link? Oh, oh well. Okay, I'm done. I'm done on languages. <laughs> but yeah. So what's happening for the past week that we can talk about? Unfortunately, we have day job. Not everything can be talked about. We were supposed so, to talk about your headphones, right? So I got a headphone, it drives me nuts. Uh, 
It drives me nuts because uh, I bought things from Lazada before. They're usually on time. They're usually on time and they're, they work pretty well. Uh, for some reason, for some reason, this one had been delayed for three days. Uh, it just be it. So the delay for three days. I only received it at uh, 6 p.m., 7 p.m. today. It was supposed to be arrived at uh, Monday. And actually, the bad part is uh, they just tell you that, they just tell you that Lazada will tell you that they use next one. That's the internal service. There's no phone number to call. Where is it? And they may tell you, uh, they may tell you uh, who is the delivery guy. But it's not much of a point because as it turns out, uh, this afternoon they switched the delivery guy. So it will up to the phone. So even though the phone number, there's no people to call it. Then so, so yeah. Unfortunately, this is uh this is from Sony, so this is about 168 ringgit. This is W uh, W la, 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 la. let me open my Bluetooth. Device. Is this the noise noise cancelling one? I think uh, swimming froze. Yeah, he did. I think. <laughs> yeah, and answering this, yeah, the, the good thing about Japanese at least is uh, is incremental. Uh, the complexity is incremental. Uh. <laughs> uh, let's. I actually just uh, remember that uh, I also discovered something that is interesting. That is a. Uh, from one of the YouTube channel, I forgot what's name. Uh, oh, from Veritasium about sun sneeze. <laughs> oh, that one you shared. You yeah, shared I, it in the channel. Yeah, it's it's finally there's a name for it. Like uh, I actually been having this and it annoying the. It annoys, people, it annoys people around me. Like whenever I go out to some some place of sprite, I have to sneeze. Mm. <laughs> and apparently there's a name for it. <laughs> it's is it activated by light or something? Uh light or heat. I don't know. For me it's a uh, uh light but when I see when like let's say when I when I when it wakes up, it's I, it somehow triggers when I don't know, I did finish the video, but uh uh, somehow it triggers by me uh, seeing the lights. Mm -hmm. So let's say when I wake up, right, I'll sneeze <laughs> if I see the lights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, it looks like, so it says the model is basic. So there's there's no noise cancelling for this one. Yeah. So uh, this one is... What is this? The CH510. Yeah. So it's very basic, but it's still a bit oh, expensive. The battery life is impressive for that. Uh, unfortunately, my Bluetooth manager just died on the next. Oh, yeah. I also sneeze uh, when the temperature change, but uh, the sun sneeze is weird. Uh, it's not necessarily the temperature change. It's from if I if I close my eyes for, for, I mean, for a period of time, then if I open it, I'll sneeze. <laughs> Okay, so uh, the well, while you're gone, I, talk, I actually talked about sun seas. <laughs> it was a very weird phenomenon. Uh, what the hell is wrong here? Yeah, and apparently, I think it's a uh, it's it's I, I got a lot of defects. Like, I also have a bimanual sync kinesis, which my both hands move together. You can see, like, involuntarily, my other fingers mm -hmm. move. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you have a very buggy operating system. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so my sound is back. Let me switch over. Mic is here. Da, 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 da. I need to refresh. I'll be back. Okay. And yeah, well, anyway, well, we'll, we'll, we're, we're talking about headphones. Uh, I recently got a pair of Elon BL03. Well, I guess it's, it's something similar to Lazada as well. I used, um, I asked for a DAC recommendation from Chi Leong. And I was supposed to get a BTR 3K, uh, an upgrade to what you used to have for Chile for the BTR 3. But 
somehow it never got delivered. I got it canceled and I got a Shanling Q1. And together with that is the Bilon BL03, which is a very good in-ear monitor. I think we talked about it a bit last week as well, mm-hmm. where it's um, it has the it's it's the same as what you you're wearing right now. So it doesn't go down the mm-hmm. ear; it goes over the ear. Uh, and I thought that was just a a different way of wearing the earphones from before until I actually found that this is how people wear it so that it doesn't like and actually this is how you mode. you're supposed to for most earphones this is how you're supposed to wear it mm. and it's, yeah. uh, I mean uh, it's it's pretty comfortable also uh, depending, on, depending on your ear size yeah. so it's, it's good this guy... because right uh-huh. Oh, sorry, uh, like just just to finish the the thought, I, I really like it because now I used to not listen to music while doing work, but now mm-hmm. I just open some of the lo-fi pop thing, the, the lo-fi hip hop. I, I forgot the name of that channel in YouTube, Chew-pop, where it's just yeah, the, it's just drones on music indefinitely, and it's just it it keeps you in the in the flow. I used to again because I have very crappy earphones. I just like get distracted with the quality of the sound but uh, ironically with the with the lo-fi but with really nice earphones it really sounds like good I, it's it's ironic but it's uh that's that's how <laughs> yeah it's very ironic <laughs> sorry Chi, uh, oh, yeah. Ming, you're saying something nah it's i'm just saying that this is just a okay okay headphone i don't think um, don't think i don't like it it doesn't I'm work actually, by default if it's really like 30 plus hour is actually uh, pretty impressive yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a good thing um uh, it, do- it doesn't work for my switch and my ps4 oh you're no, not switch able to is, share uh, switch is just switch is just nintendo being an asshole uh, it's the same for ps4 actually so i might uh i might get one of those devices in the future that allows me to do that so there's a picture but- is is this a dual function where it has bluetooth and you can also have it wired or is this only uh, no this doesn't have that which is a problem mm. uh the more expensive one like those 800 ringgit to 1000 plus ringgit, those have a wired one that would work mm. that is awesome but unfortunately this one don't have so which is actually a real problem for me uh but it will work on my laptop and everywhere else it just doesn't work on my gaming console so yeah well, it's, I guess, it's not because I guess of it's that. A it's the gaming console being uh yeah, it's being a lockdown in first I mean uh, correct, exactly. correct. So it's not a strange thing, it's it's just because uh the console is a uh, they just dead like it's a lockdown system is so you uh, it's hard for you to work programming and all that. You would have uh you would have expected that there is a standard for Bluetooth pairing, right? I mean that it, the Bluetooth uh, pairing is a standard, and yes. the Bluetooth audio codex, the S, at, least, at least SBC, everyone is expected to uh, implement SBC if you're doing the uh, audio uh, yep. portions of Bluetooth. So I'm not sure what's up with not being able to pair with. Other uh, it could be a commercial. Devices. It could be a commercial reason. Uh, they may not want the they may not want crappy earphone to ruin their experience for those things. Well, are they? Or it just they just certain... don't implement it. It's a standard. It's a standard thing to implement for modern operating system. Okay. You get it right. It's right. a pretty standard thing. Right. Yeah. So chances is it might be something. It might be something that they want to sell their own devices. It's a market to for them to buy their own uh their own accessory that's the money maker actually believe it or not <laughs> it's the same reason why okay. it's the same reason why uh, <laughs> apple devices works well with each other because it's the same <laughs> for game console actually and game console is a bit worse in a way that uh, no but game console is not a general purpose device correct that's a difference uh but but then, uh, which also means that lim- uh, there is limit of what they can sell. So in this case, the Sony can sell you an overpriced earphone, which is really good, but still overpriced for the P- that works well for the PS Five. 
uh, they would sell you a very nice game controller and they only open up to third party people will come in later so you can hack it but very likely though you want something that works well chances is you, you'll find something that is more licensed so yeah my favorite topic i know what i get myself into even though i know that i'm a pro i'm a pro software freedom just one of those things so you and mentioned the about the the delivery issues that you had and is there anything we can yeah. do as technicians or as uh developers to help Not solve really. it or is it really just a business uh, thing uh so if if all the delivery company if all the uh online e-commerce site have their way so you're not going to be able to choose which is a problem so as a consumer maybe you uh, as a consumer it's probably a good idea for you to start pushing that make sure that you get to choose your favorite delivery guy company well that that's that's strange because it's a consumer the Zada, you're not able to choose I think at least for for the last few months, yeah. I haven't been able to choose a delivery uh, method. And then there yeah. was news that Shopee is changing so that you cannot choose your delivery method anymore. Uh, because I know Correct. when I was still doing some shopping in Shopee, I always chose like, I never chose post Laju because I've always had problem with post Laju. Uh, there was like, I yeah. think, uh, was it G GDEX? I think GDEX was the one because I have good experience with GDEX because Cytron uses GDEX all the time. I mean, it doesn't use yeah. Cytron. It's just the first option in their list. And so you tend to just choose the first option in the list. But yeah, so I, I would choose that in Shopee. But now it's not going to be available. And I don't know. Is it something brought about by cheaper costs? Or are people just mm. not really that interested in choosing whatever... I have. I hope it's not just a disability. I have some issues with uh, Amazon as well. I think somehow they changed the local partner. So, uh, uh, I I remember what the last time, not not the previous one, but uh, some uh, a purchase that I did this year as well. Uh, is that they choose a really crappy local, uh, partner that do, that they doesn't know how to deliver to my office. Yeah. So used yeah, so to be, that, used to be like uh, via like the partner is via post or some mm -hmm. local one like the DHL, but uh, they change it to some really small num small firms uh, that, uh, that are not that so would experienced. Be a bit, that would be a bit dangerous to their reputation because now, yeah. since nobody can like, if you are able to choose a courier and you experience delays because of the user's agency that I chose the courier. It's partly my fault, right? That yeah. it got delayed. But now that you cannot choose, if something gets delayed, then the blame and the reputation hit goes to whoever the e-commerce yeah. site is. And yeah. I guess they just um, they just thought that they can take the hit if the or I don't know maybe some some kind of arrangement oh, where if there are delayed packages, they get to pay a fine. Uh, for the the, the, at at least for the experience of Amazon, is uh, if I raise a ticket, they're gonna do refund mm -hmm. almost immediately. Mm -hmm. of, often, uh, believe it or not, soft, in all software project uh, things, especially when you own the platform, uh, things change easily, meaning you can reverse it reasonably easily. Uh, it won't be something like that. You do that. Uh, not everyone use things like feature flag, but often uh, once uh, once uh, you have enough complaint, the star draw, the star draw uh, more support to to your support person. That usually a matrix, and you can change it back because you do own uh, the other platform can change policy reasonably easily, right? Unfortunately, uh, the boss goes back to the platform provider, the Lazada to the Shopee. Uh, and for, let's say you do work for a platform company, it's often not something that you get to choose because it's something that are, sometimes the, uh, the user research may say this is actually nice because uh, for example, me, I have no problem with post-Laju, GDEX, or even Lazada, and uh, 
Okay, I'm good to go. I, I, I think the difference is uh, if I ship it to office, uh, yeah. even post Laju and JNT are fine. But if mm -hmm. I'm going to set it to a residential one, like J, like if especially on the landed property, uh, I yeah. know JNT, they, they used to just drop the packet. Package on. I mean, uh, just yeah, throw it in your, your, your front yard, porch, right? Yeah. So, uh, but for office delivery, is uh, it's always for me, the experience is always good, uh, even for post larger. But yeah. for home, the experience is very different. Yeah. So, it's something that uh, is the ball is on the platform provider's team, so something can change. Right? I wonder if they um, so again different. With Lazada, I can somewhat see the courier's uh, trajectory or like where where the package is and that like where they, they have a map and then they have like a uh, trajectory of the people. Well, it works if you if they somehow chose Lazada Express. If they don't choose Lazada Express, it's on the courier to to like say where they are, right? But for the ones that lazada express is delivering for me i actually know and i can predict like within the hour if the delivery is going to be mm -hmm. at my uh at my post uh, box mm -hmm. if you know, if just just by seeing the map so i wonder if this is something that they can like start forcing the uh the couriers to have like some sort of uh -huh. tracking because uh, now so like they can say we're not going to give you business if you're not going to do the tracking, like a, just some kind uh, of minimal thing. So here's the thing, right? Uh, each of the company have different kind of infrastructure, uh, infrastructure, and some have more, some have more power to negotiate than another. So the theory is that the theory is right, but so let's talk the first thing, uh, So for example, I can't, I do not know where the driver go for. Uh, for Lazada delivery for this guy, uh, I only know they come directly to my house, and that's it. That's it. Uh, there's a map direction, but I don't think they really follow that because you just can't. It's, it's, it's also up to them to update it. Correct. Mm. Uh, and second, uh, certain company have other business than Lazada, so they may be linked to may be linked to not do this because. Uh, delivery company, the biggest business is not, it's not necessary. It's not necessarily uh, e-commerce. It's big in numbers. Uh, they are big. Uh, those that pay more is actually the office packages. Those pay more than uh, because you only pay like three ringgit, five ringgit. No, I think also the mm -hmm. the I think. Uh, somehow the office delivery are more organized because also it's uh, the density is there. Yeah, yeah. correct. So yeah, you have more people being more delivered more. too. And finally, uh, the size of the uh, next to the size of business, right? Post Laju actually have volume and more importantly, their volume outside of e-commerce, and they are actually owned by they not uh, they actually owned by uh, Highcom. That's the big, big Malaysian conglomerate. So, well, yeah. is it not a state owned current service? Not. It's, it's no longer yeah. interesting. Uh, Post Malaysia is no longer a government service, it's not privatized under HICOM. So, now there's another thing already. Even a state one, they don't have obligation to do that for the first place unless you create a law to say for service to work. So that's one way la. but on the other hand you're not wrong that you're not wrong that if you can do uh, if, uh, if the e-commerce company band together and said we want that probably they will probably they will but there will be negotiation it will be a negotiation the contract you know what i mean yeah so it's not that uh you're not wrong but it's there's a people side la. and also uh, your phone gps is accuracy is different between people well, it, it doesn't have to be the phone GPS. I mean, you have your your fleet, right? So, yeah, and I'm sure they the want to check. I think fleet. it doesn't even need to do point to point. It's just that, yeah. Uh, update just update the status. Like, might be just a workflow. Correct. Uh, because uh, uh, 
point to point tracking, just like uh, it's dispatch. Uh, I got a feeling. I got a feeling that uh, fleet management for fleet management uh, for delivery company are not that advanced down here. Uh, it's a feeling. Uh, there are chances oh, we can, we can ask uh, we can ask Chi Leong at least for like surface uh, comments on fleet management. I'm sure you touch on mm -hmm. a bit you of this. No? No. <laughs> I don't want him to get fired. If you get fired, fleet now you have to fight a new job. It's a it's it's own domain. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes. the the problem with the money is not really there. So. Yeah, correct. <laughs> That's why it's uh, more profitable. I don't. I'm not gonna name. Uh, names, but you see, uh, some of the fleet management provider they switch to do uh, vehicle insurance because Correct. it's sort of tied back mm -hmm. to that, and also it's 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 actually uh you you get better paid. <laughs> yeah, correct. So it's a bigger 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 size thing, So you want so to talk about this. your uh, ML after this? so like your gesture thing uh so i have bad news my bad news is uh the environment is on my laptop <laughs> i can't show thing the good news is my source code is on github it's on github this year. we can we can take a look at it but so you're you're planning on joining this con contest in hackster.io that has something uh, no. to do with tiny ml no no this is not about uh this is not about uh hexter io this is the tiny ml challenge i want to start with different ah. because the deadline uh the the deadline for this is uh, closer than the than the hexter io challenge mm -hmm. uh, hexter io and challenge. so you're and the, thinking about doing some gesture training custom gesture training yeah uh, and you okay. were already able to get a bit of the tiny ml onto a microcontroller yes let me see if i can show that okay. is this an esp32 oh uh so let's start one by one let's start one by one now uh so the first thing i want to show is uh this guy so this is the arduino uh, I already showed that yesterday. This is the Arduino BLE Sense, not the BLE Sense. Uh, so what does this mean is that this Arduino board is a nano, but it has onboard sensor. It have a light sensor. Uh, it have a light distance, light distance and cut color. So this is actually from the APDS sensor. You have microphone. I uh, will talk about that last time. It have a uh, Microphone, blah, 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 blah. Accelerometer uh, and... Uh, accelerometer and gyroscope. Yeah, gyroscope. So uh, for this project, I actually use gyroscope. Uh, I'm going to share the gist somewhere else as well. Gyroscope have, um, is, will measure the orientation in space, right? No, wait. Change, uh, yeah. no, it, it will change the, the delta, like whether you moved it from like in one of the axes, but it does not tell you which it's the, which it is facing at at that point. Because when it stops, yes. then the gyroscope is just there. Yeah. Or will it? I forgot. Oh. I forgot which of the sensors are doing which. Okay, so let's start one by one. I didn't share my screen yet. Did I share my screen yet? Because I'm gonna share something else. Nope. You haven't yet. If I share something outward, I will kill you. Can tell me you can see my screen. So the first challenge I'm here is, uh, this is the TensorFlow challenge. Uh, this will, uh, so unfortunately, it occurs to me that this challenge uses specifically this one. This is just a power bank. I don't care about power bank. I can use my power bank. We need to deliver this by July 19, which is next month. Uh, it must be open source. Uh, it must use TensorFlow Lite. Uh, and currently, they got a lot of interesting projects already. So one of the things that you can do already do is you can use gesture, you can use sound, right? 
so let me get you another demo. I hope I have that. La 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 la. la. Can you email? Oh, sorry. Uh, GitHub.com TensorFlow. So, uh, you can already do, you can already do a few things. You can already do gesture. This is the magic one. You can do micro speech. This is actually the microphone. You can give basic command. Uh, unfortunately, the data set for this only, uh, they use a small data set that only have 30 words. So this one, uh, and you can do person detection if you have a camera. Wait, wait, sorry, is it, they only use dirty words for the data set? 30 word, no. choose zero words. <laughs> <That's laughs> <for you. laughs> okay. Uh, 30 words, right? Uh, so uh, the capability is there. The capability is already there. Uh, the competition is, uh, be creative. Uh, so what I already done is, what I already done is I have, I wonder if I can see the video. Da -da -da -da. So uh, I already do a soy command. Uh, my is this stuff for Tinder by the way. This is meant to use for. This is actually meant to use for. Or my original design is I want to use this for uh, controlling slideshows. So that I can put it on the stick and swing it around. So this one uh, and the source code for that is I uh, is actually on uh, the gist. So I'll share the links. Uh, la la la. Alama. Gist. Can you show show us uh, how it work? I'm going to do that right now, but I have. La, 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 la. The thing that my gist is public. Uh, it take a while. It take a while to look. So uh, there is actually three things here. Three things here. Uh, first thing is uh, la, la, la. Okay, first thing. Call that. Uh, you need to capture the data. That's the first thing. So uh, the nano 33 cents actually have a gyroscope. I just use a gyroscope. So this is an accelerometer that can trace up, down, left, right, and also orientation. So this is a gyroscope, right? <laughs> uh, and the goal here is to capture the CSV. So uh, the hack here is, the hack here is, uh, I'm going to uh, pr use serial print line to print the CSV and and actually uh, just copy and paste over. And you don't need to do a lot. Here's the cool thing. You do not need to do a lot. So what I do is actually hold this uh, somewhere like this, okay? Then I actually do this 10 times. So uh, in this experiment, uh, you would do like multiple, multiple gesture 10 times. Then you copy the whole data and copy it over to the CSV. Then what you do then is you're going to uh, you're going to put this on a TensorFlow, uh, put this on uh, put this on what? Oh yeah, on Google Colab so that you can. So I'm too lazy to install Arduino environment. So then uh, within the environment, you need to uh, graph the data, the accelerometer and gy gyroscope. It will go something. It doesn't make sense to us. But it is what it is. Then you need to, what this do is, uh, they actually normalize the data and more importantly, they group the data. So what does it, what it means is that I have the same for the same number of data you and you do 10 times. So within one gesture, they group the data at one place and then put it on a matrix in the tensor, then use it for training. Uh, so it automates training. the, so you just need to gather the data and automates the splitting of the thing and then saying this is the actual data that you want to train? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, essentially, yes. Uh, so, what this thing does is because 
uh, every every uh, every ten options or so, we can add one new line. So as a result, uh, it's easy. Uh, then they know how to group the data. So they group it as one tensor. So which is why uh, one gesture. So let's say I do one hand. So then I calculate how uh, this gesture has how uh, one of these gesture has has how many samples. So one thing that we put is the hard code is 119. So 119, uh, 119 samples. Then we group this at one place and put it on tensor and train it as an output. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, well, I, I just don't know how you will like remove baselines. Like because there are some shakes, for example, right? Like ah, that, okay. that might become part of your training, but you're only interested ah. in the actual action. So, uh, so what they do here is they actually check for sudden movement. Where is it? Uh, so, what, what, um, how do you define sudden movement? Oh, the threshold, the acceleration threshold. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what they do is uh, they actually uh, get the value of get value of uh, the accelerometer any direction. Then I add everything together. So if you, okay, let's assume you had a robot machine steady hand, machine like steady hand, it will be zero, right? Let's say you have yeah. any direction, then you will get 2.5, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, it take a while. Uh, then you is can, it uh, G's? 2.5 G's? A uh, 2.5 is a number produced by the accelerometer. Yeah. yeah but uh, yeah, I, I, okay. I just don't know what the unit of measure is. Yeah, I do not I know as well. Okay. Uh, for okay. for these purposes, we don't care. All right, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, this is the wrong copy. You should not have a uh, had a boom here, but I had this for this <laughs> one previously. I want to make sure that the data do get printed properly. Uh, so you don't have that. But either way, uh, once you move in one direction, so uh, they only start reading from there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So once you have that, then so it's a, need... somewhat of a clean. Data. like where, where does it stop though because when you're slowing down then it yeah. will cut off at that threshold as well yeah so uh in this case the hack here is uh the hack here is that tell you that gather until 119 and stop mm. from there so it, it it's like an amount of time thing like yeah. as soon as it crosses the threshold then you have however gesture that will fit within 119 samples which is like let's say it's about a second of a gesture worth. correct correct mm -hmm. so once you get a sample once you get a sample then you get enough then you pretty much stop and then don't start getting more reading you can do more but then just stop at that so the the designer of the example uh designer of the example decide that uh once you move you get 119 and that's enough and you do it 10 times mm -hmm. for each gesture. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Then yep. after that, uh, once you do a second round, uh, second round of reading, then uh, then they'll be set a sample read, then they'll be count again. Because so in, in this case, really the, the actual machine learning is handled by the libraries and by Google, etc. The actual hard part here is the training. Like yeah, correct, setting correct. the threshold, the length of time, gathering the actual gestures. That's yes. that's basically the, the difficult part now. Cleaning the data. Yes. The, so we the display, sexy parts uh, are done by Google. In fact, the sec uh, the machine learning part, the machine learning part is just this. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing you don't even create the model. They they you just say this is what kind of fit I want. And that's it. Yeah, they have correct. all of the libraries. Uh, you don't, you don't get to like write the actual no, machine learning algorithm. No, you're wrong. Uh, this is the machine learning. Uh, in fact, a neural network you don't get to control anything. You yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, anything. yeah, the network you don't, uh, you don't touch it. You just say this is your, yeah, uh, configuration so is, basically. Uh, Google do not know what you process and all that. They only tell, tell, give you the layer of neural network. And that's it. And which is why neural network have been traditionally hard to debug because it's a black box. 
So here you actually uh, clean up the data, make sure it's easy to read, easy to process, you know, yeah. Then after that, after that, then you have to split your data. Then you do your training. Lah. Then after that, uh, after that is you have to, uh, you have to plot your data. This is actually very noisy. You are not wrong in a way that it's very noisy. But as it turns out, it's good enough in my little case, lah, in, in my experiment. So you realize there is a lot of error, even though we, uh, the training is good. So more data probably can help. So I thought I thought that with all this noise, it doesn't work as well, but it works good enough. Interesting. What what what, what is this plot? Is it the plot of your training okay. data versus its own prediction against the training data? So I this is the, uh, the green it's... part. The green part is the training. Uh, the blue part is the validation. Yeah. What what is it validating against? Is it validating against new data, or no? Whole... Uh, so. Uh, so uh, we validated against errors. Mm -hmm. So uh, so what this what this plot does is they're actually getting lost. So training have their own loss. Uh, how many error yeah. you get right every time uh, with certain numbers. Mm -hmm. So uh, this training uh, now we use this training. Okay, so imagine this way: uh, you train your net neural network this time. You get your training data. You get then you get how uh against actual data how much error then you take mm -hmm. uh, now you take testing data testing data you fit in because we already have labeled right remember we already labeled our data all right we already label our data uh the how we label our data is uh let me go back up uh la, 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 la. so tensor by output 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 is the one hot is actually the label. It's actually a number representation of the gesture, and gesture is just a label. It's just a label. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what you uh, what what we do here is uh, training. We take the training data, we fit in, then we compare against the predicted uh, predicted label. If it's equivalent, then you calculate the percentage of how many errors. Then you do the same. The blue part is actually what you do uh, every time you're training. Then you take testing data and compare against it. Mm -hmm. You get it right. Mm -hmm. So this is the error. Error. Uh, how much? Uh, how many? How many wrong prediction on the label? How far are you so far in this project? Uh, it's okay. So remember, I say. You look at this it looks very noisy it doesn't work as well but it looks it works well enough as in uh seven uh eight out of ten times it works does okay. that make sense and are oh, and yeah. uh -huh. in case of your submission are you thinking of like is it just packaging it so that it becomes a some sort of bluetooth keyboard something that does gestures and yeah, that's yeah, it yeah, yeah. or are you improving the data a bit more and then submitting it like that uh i might as well like, do, what are more next steps? do more gesture mm -hmm. i might as well do more because the effort of generating data is not a lot for the first place mm -hmm. uh because uh the code is there the data gathering is there and i don't think there's any more cleaning needed i don't think so uh let's see what other people does but i think it's good enough i think more data is enough for me to have a very clean video mm -hmm. so the effort is not so much on the data gathering so then after that once you plot your errors and all that then you'll get a tensorflow uh tensorflow like file then you generate the dot h file using xxd and what you get here from what you do get from at the end of getting model dot h is essentially this by uh, this array, this C array that is very hard to read, and this is actual this is the actual neural network model in C. So it's in binary and it's only interpretable by the TensorFlow -like library. So, so yeah, uh, if for yeah. you to win, do we have to vote on your thing? Uh, like, like are you me, asking like us me. to vote? Okay. Uh, yeah, so I will need to share my 
I need to make a video, then you may need to put like and whatnot. Then the judge will need to decide whether it's good enough, it's interesting enough. Mm -hmm. So my worry is, my worry is, uh, the presentation controller might be too generic as a project, and I can only submit one project. So I may experiment a bit, but toward next month, I may just submit whatever what I have. Lah. The more interesting one that I have. Well, maybe maybe aside from gestures, can you combine two? Uh, gestures and sound? So that uh, when you, you say next slide, please, it actually goes to the next one? We need to be careful about the size of the models. Because mm -hmm. what happened is, uh, there's only one interpreter instance at one time. So you cannot... It has to fit in very memory. Hard to, it's, yeah, it will, you need, it's hard to sort out, you, which is why uh, memory might be a problem and also swapping two models would be a problem because what the, what this do is uh, if, when you uh, when you do your setup, they actually load the model file, then you have to reload again, it gets really weird. Now. Okay. So you need to load the model, generate the interpreter, allocate the data and all that. Uh, if you try to if you try to keep doing this, it'll be too slow. Because these are all these are expensive processes. So uh, the workflow for this is you really, you really have to only focus on doing one thing and one thing only because that's what microcontroller does. It's only good at doing one thing and one thing only. So uh, something to think about lah. Maybe that's so, that's the maybe that's the innovation you can do. You can actually have two, but it's two in one. So two microcontrollers, two nanos, but one of them is actually the one that's the keyboard. Ah, so which goes to my one of my original idea, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to show something else later. I'm going to show something else later. Uh, oh, you can you so can probably show it like next month. Oh, sorry, next week. Yeah, because we're almost but, there. Uh, we can use two microcontrollers. I happen to have two devices that I can use. So there is one way. Let's see how far my experiment goes. Yeah. So that yeah, might be interesting. Uh, maybe I think these. that that might be the the secret sauce that gives you the innovative approach. Like people are yeah. going to be just using one, right? But using two and then having that combined uh, like the signals might be the interesting part. Yeah, but in practice, that will be a lot harder, actually. That will actually be a lot harder because uh, there's a limit of memory and there's a limit of processing. And you can't really do... Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. So I think that's about it. Yeah. That's next week. Yeah. Let's see how far I can hack this thing goes. And I got... Well, I actually... To be honest, uh, if I focus too much on this, I, it's very likely I can only do the TensorFlow of the Tiny ML Micro Challenge. Yeah, because uh, video is hard, so you can't do video. Really, like that, but I can't do video. Let's see. Let's see. So, and that's about it from me. Okay. Well, we'll see you next week. Yes. All right, then. So, anything else from you guys? Oh, nothing from me. Yeah, if not, I think we can say goodbye, lah, and I need to start finding i need to find more guests actually mm -hmm. i've been procrastinating for a long long while so this next week all right so we, so we say goodbye then yes see you next week like share subscribe yes. all of that things yeah bye see you next week yes so and